You tune in to the chat right here on City TV with your girl AJ Aquaco Sapo. Now you can get interactive by simply sending in your messages using the hashtag the chat on social media. So the hashtag the chat on social media but you know mother's day is very close right well on this particular mother's day which happens to coincide on the 8th of may city fm and city tv will be doing something really spectacular by allowing you win something incredible for your mother we call it a portrait of mama so it's in two folds the first one being a promotion where you get to win something spectacular for your mother a weekend getaway for her and a plus one it could be you it could be someone special for her and together they would have the most incredible all expense paid weekend at Peninsula Resort. Now all you have to do is basically send in a message telling us the biggest sacrifice mama has ever done. So mama's biggest sacrifice and how that impacted you. Send it in to the WhatsApp number 0549-986-996 or 0550-585832. Add your name, your mother's name, and your contact information and send via WhatsApp. And you could be um, the one whose touching message will earn your mother the most incredible weekend getaway. And as well, the second part being an event. On the 8th of May, we're going to be gathering all mothers and allowing you the opportunity to bring your mother to have the most exquisite evening filled with celebration, love, and so much enjoyment. And we'll be giving you all the details about that on a Monday. So look forward to knowing or hearing about how you can be able to give your mother the most incredible um, weekend or should I say, mothering Sunday ever with our very exciting Portrait of Mama events that will be happening on the 8th of May. But we're still in the studios about to get into our conversation now on our uh, Afrobeats and if that is truly taking over the industry or should I say the world in a way that is usurping um, the dominance of other very incredible uh, music genres from across the African continent but still in the studio with me I have media personality Chris Carter writer, media personality uh, artist, manager Adam Mensa Totomi and finally um, entertainment journalist and personality Kwame Datsi. Now, before anything at all, I'm going to get in the cocktails to refresh us before we start the conversation. So, brew services are the ones that power our very delicious cocktails. Today's cocktail is called Pepper's Tail. Um, it's inspired by our celebrity guest, Kofi Usupapra, who will be joining us a little later on the show. It has apple juice, pineapple juice, mint leaves, lime juice, and the winning ingredient, Good Day Energy Drink. And of course, find brew services on social media and also get your delicious cocktail served to you at your favorite event, courtesy Bruce services. Now, getting straight into it, and I think I'll start off with what has generated this conversation. So, in case you didn't know, um, Sarkodie and Stoneboy are currently in Paris for an initiative by the um, French ambassador to Ghana called Paris in oh, Accra in Paris. And while there, they were doing a bit of a media tour, and in one of the conversations that were had, it was on if Afrobeat has sort of taken over the dominance, especially since. Um, uh, Stoneboy largely is like an Afro dancehall artist, and while Sarkozy is more of a rap, hip life sort of artist, and not necessarily dabbling into the Afro beat seriously as uh, what has been propounded by our other African nation brothers like uh, Nigeria. And this is what they had to say when they were asked. Now, in the past, Ghanaian and maybe West African music uh, generally was often classified as world music because the industry failed to recognize the nuances and the specificities of different genres and different scenes. Now, Billboard has launched a US Afrobeats chart and uh, the UK has done that too for mm -hmm. African artists and the diaspora. Spotify has an Afro hub. What do you think of these initiatives? Are they good exposure or is it, again, lumping everything together? Yeah, man, I think it's, it's good exposure and same time is lumping, you know what I mean? Because there are criteria by which those are defined. And sometimes when you move away from those criteria, music still leaves on and people still feed on. You know what I mean? Uh, I think some of the criteria they use is when you trend on TikTok and when you do all them one day. But sometimes some of us have come from schools where, you know, you know, you just do the music and the music lives with people. It's not everybody does. And trending actually might be cool, but class is imperial. So I would also debate it. It's a beautiful thing. It keeps us pushing. It keeps us adding up to the Western standard. You know what I mean? But 
if you ask Stone Boy, I'll tell you that it doesn't stop there. It doesn't even. It didn't even begin there. But it adds on to exposing African arts, and they're more beyond the standards that they create. You know what I mean? Like the rules that put the the, the those songs on that on on that on that uh, chart. Aside from that, there are actually gems hidden behind. Yeah, you think it could pr- perhaps prompt people to go and seek out new music? I think anything successful is definitely going to have people want to come and join it, so I'm definitely up for it. Um, as he said, I think we just have to make sure that we don't lose the core of what the music is for, so we don't um, yes, lose the value of what Afrobeat stands for, because I think it was just a matter of time. I knew this time was going to come. I didn't know when, and I thank God that we were the generation that was able to push that boundary and open that door for the next generations to come. Um, I think it's, if it stayed in Africa, that would have been just an African thing. And now everybody want to join it. And whether you like it or not, Afrobeat is the new coup. That's the the song that turns the clubs up. So, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm open for people to join to make it way bigger. So, yes, definitely. Yeah, but, okay, listen to the answer. They, they, they said quite a bit. But did they really tackle the question that was asked? If Afrobeat has truly taken over... Um, has become the dominant music genre on the African continent. I, 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 unless I didn't hear the question very That's well. And let me, let me come to my panel. The, what was the question? Has Afrobeat taken over as a dominant genre and sort of dwarfed other genres? Wasn't that the, the main question that was being asked, Kwame? I think the main question was their take on lumping all music genres in Africa together under one umbrella called Afrobeat. Afrobeat. Which in turn um, makes, which usurps other genres' exactly, dominance. Yes. Exactly. So automatically, any any music genre in Africa becomes a part of Afrobeats. Yes. BS. Which has become now like everyone thinks African yes, music is Afrobeats. Yes, yes. Whether it's Congo, uh, whether um, it's Zoo, or, whether it's uh, Kwaito. Or, or Kwaito, or I'm a piano, or High Life, or Hip Life, Kong. or. Or, or yes, or, yeah. or, or um, uh, Mapuka or whatever it is. Everyone seems to now, and I say everyone being those from the Western side, side. of the world, yeah. I think that's, now yeah. start looking at the genres as one. Yes. I don't, I, I, you I don't you think disagree? That's true, yeah. How? I don't think that's true. Because before Afro, um, Afro beats came into existence, there were other uh, genres that were on top there, so it cannot just sweep it away. In France, like they're in France right now, even in France itself, they knew Sukus, they know Zouk. But you understand? Did the and, rest and, and, of the world and, and, know and, it? And, and they never called it Afrobeats. And no one has ever, I don't think anyone has ever put, um, um, put like even French rap, French rap on the Afrobeats. Never. Mm. The French know it. The, mm. the people that play Sukus know it. The people that play the Ivorian music know it. The the Senegalese music, no one can ever put it. I think we just we're imagining things right now. Maybe we can say like maybe um all Anglophone songs at this point might be sound like might be put on the Afro beats. But if you say French songs, the French the woman there knows that okay, if she hears any song from Congo, she knows, oh no, c'est sucou, c'est pas la Afro beats, huh? She'll just let you know that, you know, it's that. So I think sometimes we 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 are just projecting what we think it is. No, but la- largely, oh, and l- let's put the France because French, the French connection is quite strong, so they yes, recognize yes, their own. Yeah. But when it comes to America and the UK and uh, the European side of things, if, and even up to China, perhaps, yeah. when they now hear a certain distinct sound, they assume automatically it's Afrobeat. The like, sound. Some of the the songs that Kwame Eugene will do. Yeah. It is not Afrobeats. It's it not is not Afrobeats. High life. Yeah, but, but you know, lump it under Afrobeats. But the put, yeah, the put. So basically, if you see the description of Afrobeats, mm-hmm. not Afrobeat, mm-hmm. which is fella. Yes, Afrobeats is fella. Afrobeats is um what um high life um what with, burner everyone has done. It's, it's basically like the new school. Yes. But then a lot of artists that are in uh, Ghana, mm-hmm, for instance, mm-hmm. uh, Bisa, uh, Kwabna Kwabna, Kwame Eugene, Kitty to some extent, are, n- were not, are not necessarily doing Afro beats with an S. Yeah, they are, some of them are doing high life. Some of them are doing hip life. Yeah. But there's no distinction these days. It's more, if you do anything close to popular music, it's mm-hmm. lumped as Afro beats. Yeah. As against it being 
highlight which yes, was the original exactly, intention yeah. so at this particular point in time and if you even look at maybe liberia or cameroon or right, senegal right. Or maybe where the, it's not primarily french speaking mm -hmm. where it's more largely like west yeah. african side of music it has become the dominant genre. Everyone right. who hears it assumes that it's Afrobeats. Right. And when it's not necessarily Afrobeats. Right, right, right. And I, I, think, I think it's because whoever created, you know, they created this umbrella or this boss to carry all these genres just to please the English. Mm. Not even like the Europeans, just mm. the English. Because when you read the description and the whole whatever of Afrobeats, why it was created, it's just so that the English will feel like, okay, this is the music coming mm. from there. Mm. And I think it's a mistake. Yeah. It shouldn't be happening. It shouldn't be happening at all. But what can we do? Nothing. But can't we now, if, if we were deliberately pushing different genres as against focusing on allowing people to keep it up because right now you even in description of artists oh kelvin boy an afrobeat artist as against originally a high life artist mm -hmm. or what's a uh, down flat which is has primarily a lot of high life originating sounds is now being lumped as an afrobeat song but let me come to you kwame yeah. um did you first and foremost do you think they they attack the question in the way that it should and your views on the apparent dominance on Afrobeats as against other genres? To me, I think they failed. Mm. It's and either what's they do not understand the question mm. or they don't really know the difference between Afrobeats and Afrobeats. Mm. So the question was asked primarily on the fact that that term called Afrobeats has become more or less uh, an umbrella term for all songs or sounds from Africa now. Mm. So even on the streaming site, if you want to upload your, your song, the category there, Afrobeats is there mm. for all sounds from Africa, yeah. if you like. Now, how did this start? So in 2011, there is this gentleman in the UK called DJ Abrantier. Yes. He had a radio show yes. that was named I remember Afro it was a Beats. Saturday night show. Great. I actually absolutely love the show. And he, he started calling music from Nigeria, Ghana, and Afro other West beats, African yes. countries Afrobeats with the S. The difference is that what Fela created in 1968 is the Afrobeats without the S. Mm -hmm. And that is a fusion of high life, Fuji music, jazz, jazz and all that. Yeah. That is a very distinct sound. He came to Ghana, studied our music terrain, took our high life, took it a bit and then had Afro beats from that. Mm. At that time, High Life was the ish in West Africa, everywhere. But you know, Fela, as smart as he was, wanted to own something for himself in Nigeria. He created Afro beats out of High Life music. Mm. Then it went on for a while, you know, to a time when um, in West Africa, in Nigeria, in Ghana, some of these artists were penetrating the international markets, the UK, the US, and all that. People like DJ Abrantia thought it wise to, to, to bring them together, give them a name that will project them to the outside world. Yeah. So it was for marketing purposes. Yeah. Now, we should note that Afro beats with the S is not a music genre. Mm -hmm. So if you listen to Stoneboy and Sarkodie, they were creating the impression that Afro beats with the S it's is a, a, sing, a particular sound. Mm -hmm. You think it's, it's not become a genre now? It's, it's, it's many sounds. Mm. It's many sounds. What Nigerians do, they call the Afro beats without the S now, mm. is also there. Mm. You listen to Burna Boy and you listen to Whiskey, mm. they do something that is uh, a result of Fela's exactly. creation. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. So you listen to Burna Boy, you listen to Whiskey, what they do, the Afro beats without the S, is now packed under the Afrobeats with the S. Mm. So we shouldn't confuse the two. The one with the S is just a description. Okay. It's just like say, saying African music. Okay. But they decided to call it Afrobeats. Now it's favoring the Nigerians because it taps into what they created and owned. So now when you mention Afrobeats, the very first country that comes to mind is Nigeria. Of course. Because they started Afrobeats without the S and mm. now we have added S to it to include everybody in the world. Mm. So from the Explanation Stoneboy and Sakodia were giving, they were mistaking Afrobeats for Afrobeats. Mm. And that's a problem because now if they've lumped 
every other sound in Africa together to call it Afrobeats, created a chart. The Billboard US Afrobeat chart, the UK Afrobeat chart is yes. there as well. And now even musicians from America, elsewhere, are tapping into our sounds in Africa here. You know, so even um, the Billboard report that came out a few weeks ago announcing the creation of the, of the chart, they said Beyonce is one of the people who projected Afrobeat. Yes. Because of the, the Lion gift, King, Lion King the gift album. album. You Which see? was already late, to be perfectly honest. Exactly. Exactly. Honest. Because yes, it was, yes, it was yes, huge. Yes, and it was intentional true. to tap into African rhythms for her album. Yes. So simply so. So I, I think that the problem now with Ghanaians is trying to look at how um, we've slept on our indigenous music genres, like high life music. Okay, people think that if we are all putting ourselves under Afro beats, then it means we can't project high life any longer. Now everybody is Afro beats. No, well, I think that, that is it. Because when you, you know, Black Sheriff featured on the uh, Afro beats UK chart, yeah. Black Sheriff typically isn't an Afro beats artist, he's not. It doesn't do Afro beats, but at the moment you start, you you do and any yeah, song, African music, African yes. music, they are branding everybody from As Africa, Afrobeats. creating the impression that we are one country and we have one sound. It is not so because but you have yeah, different sounds. I understand you, but you said something yeah. that what Ghanaians are trying to do now, um, you know, they they, they just want to you know follow that path. But you yeah. remember, someone like Flavor, yeah, Flavor. You ask him what what kind of music do you do? Yeah. He'll tell you high life. He's a highlight mm. artist. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So I think people. Um, I think sometimes we imagine that these people don't want to say they are. Af I mean, high life musicians. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you ask them one on one or in an interview, what do you do? It's high. Life. I think we should stop assuming. I think we should just take it easy on Ghanaian sometimes. No, yeah. I, I think the difference is the difference is that we should we should stop confusing the genre and the with movement. the descriptive word Afrobeats. But you see, I, I, I get what you're saying because yes. eventually they're going to start lumping all African music. Exactly. In that. Because and eventually we'll start seeing um, Sukus yes. on Afrobeats charts. Yes. But yes. Then let, me come, let me come into uh, <laughs> Adam's thoughts on this yeah. because. I mean, uh, when Kwame uh, was uh, London, he made a point about high life. we sleeping on high life. Yeah. One thing I think contributed to the rise of the word. Or the term Afrobeat is how Fela started his Afrobeat. You know, mm. I mean, he started doing the High Life and even formed a band known as the High Life Band mm. because of the 1969 Biafra war and challenges in Nigeria. He left to the US and he came back. Now, High Life was more singing about love, this, this. But when he came back, he realized that the situation On was ground. so terrible that you can't do love sing love songs so he turned his sound where he released the uh, my lady's frustration that was his his first afrobeat sound changing the sound to afrobeat then he changed his high life band from the name of his high life band to fella kuti and uh, uh, 70 uh, african 70. so it was it started a certain movement mm. The messaging changed yes. it was from more, love to politics, yes. attacking politicians, yes. attacking social, I mean, issues. System, social yeah. issues. And because of that, Fela became like he was arrested more than How 20 he, times. Yeah. And through one of his things, I mean, his mother the, the, was the, killed. The, the consequences yeah. of they threw his mother out of the window. She suffered some injury. And 14 months after, he died. And uh, uh, when uh, Obama Sanjo, I mean, uh, decided to shift from the military to uh, uh, democracy, he was able. He was very confident to go and present coffin to the base mm. where those military who came to his house were, and he released another song. The zoo, uh, he released another song to attack the. The, uh, the military. Mm. So if you understand the international media too, you see that when it comes to media framing, they love things like that. The struggle So story. somebody who is, I mean, struggling at yeah. the point, he even wanted to contest for presidency and he was disqualified. So such things gained international, I mean, Peace. attention. So he's activated. He was in the news. Yeah. 
And so highlight when it, when wasn't years later, it comes up again. You see, so people generate. There wasn't anyone on the highlight yeah, front story, who yeah. was enjoying that me because of what he was doing. Mm. It, he was like a freedom fighter. Yes, and he because was. of his mother's association with Kwame Nkrumah, he was a Pan Africanist as well. So, I mean, all of these things contributed to the loudness of Afrobeat. It's not as if we slept, mm. but the journey of the man mm. made that gen of music very popular okay. until his death in 1997. You know, so uh, he, he went on a certain path which hi our high life was basically, I mean, of love and other things. And such things, you, you will not get the international media attention. Mm -hmm. They will not put you on DW, they will not put you on BBC. Oh, Charlie, now because alone. you're not doing anything. Yeah. But <laughs> if it's about <laughs> struggle, <laughs> yeah, you see, that is the kind of news they want. So, I mean, the path he took. I don't think it's help. a struggle necessarily. Activism. If you say struggle, our oh, no, our I'm saying that. No, I'm saying the path. <laughs> struggle every day. No, I'm saying the path. The path he yeah. took. Yeah. I mean, uh, 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 helped in projecting his genre, mm. and that is why it was bigger than other genres because most of the other genres didn't go through this in terms of those who were the proponents. So, I mean, regardless of everything whether we are sleeping or not sleeping, mm -hmm. if you break this down, there is a high life in it. You understand? To the mm -hmm. extent that if you trace the history, there is a high life undertone of it. Yeah. And, you know, even the beat with S, uh, DJ Abrantz here, I mean, UK, where they were doing party in the park and other things, it was a time where those living in the diaspora wanted to connect to yeah. their roots and it helped in growing the genre. It has now led to a certain movement, and it's a pop, popular music. Mm. Everyone is going by that movement, movement, and it has led to where now. We should get to check because many people, many music executives of African origin, especially in Nigeria, are not happy, including Bernard Boy. Yeah. He says he doesn't understand why Afrobeat, they should add S to <laughs> Afrobeat and change it. That is, he even, he even want to, I mean, uh, uh, discredit UK playing in the past, yeah. and he always, he want to push that into fella. Mm -hmm. Yes, because and they, they shouldn't. He, he doesn't understand why somebody should add S to it. And a, a lot of Nigerian music executives also say it's an insult mm -hmm. to add S and say there is this alphabet. And so that thing is there. Some musicians from Eastern Africa are saying they should call their kind of music Eastern uh, uh, Afro East. <laughs> and it's creating that thing, you know. Yeah. Caspar uh, Noves, he's been on South interviews Africa, where they don't even want to. Even, do they don't want to be associated to, to Africa. Africa. They they want to do their so, own thing. Yeah, it's creating <laughs> that confusion, that that I mean division. But hey, they say half a loaf is better than none because but, regardless of the division controversy, it's also putting a certain spotlight on on the country, music. the music from okay. Africa, and music executives from overseas. We'll, we'll spot some talents, I mean, give them certain shows, lift them, and when they are lifting them, I mean, reason, one of the other reasons that Afrobeat with S also made it to the mainstream is the, the, the breaking of records with streaming numbers from the Nigerian artists, mm. where they were able to, I mean, rake in 80 million streams, 40 million streams, and it, it brought a certain, I mean, like, hey, what are they going? Yeah. So they looked at that section and said, oh, these people are really coming in strong. So uh, for now, that's the situation. We need to educate the world mm -hmm. and embrace this as well. And gradually, I mean, we can make the changes. But, yeah, <laughs> because I, I, I understand you, but talking uh, about there, there is some in why, every disadvantage, why are we always supposed some... to be the ones uh, uh, take it like that, take, uh, uh, take it like that? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, it's everything in Africa. Like, it's almost like we don't have a voice, uh, take it like that. Because if you look at the chart... <laughs> but, but we I don't mean, really. But this, this the, the, the dictators of the music... Uh, the music yes, need to be part of yeah. it. The yeah. dictators yeah. of the global music yeah. scene yeah. are yeah. the West. And they're the ones that have the money. Yeah. And they're yeah. the ones that and have decided that, you know what, we'll call all of you people... Yeah. Afrobeats, and yeah. then you have to go with it. But in terms of how Star Cordier and Stoneboy answered the question, mm. do you think they did justice to it, Adam? I mean, <laughs> uh, listening to Stone, yeah. I think his focus was more on how they do the chart, mm. the categorization, mm -hmm. and 
areas like TikTok and social media where they look at maybe certain things and he think that others are disadvantaged because mm. not all of them we'll make no news or make noise. They, 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 they don't do those trends mm. and other things. So some of them do authentic, just the good music without any noise. So if they go by these things to do the charts, he feels that they are disadvantaged. I mean, mm. that is, I think, maybe he had, that is how he understood the question okay. to that extent. But uh, he did not, they did not, they didn't, they addressed it to a certain extent, mm. but not, I mean, holistic. Mm. And like they say, you cannot get perfection at all the time. And South Korea too like this. I mean, he wanted to be simple by saying, oh, Charlie, let, let yeah, them all, let's all come, come on. Charlie, let, I mean, it, it, it's like, they understood it to certain extent yeah. and missed out on some point. But okay. I mean, it's all good. Okay. Uh, I, I would like to also on, on this thing. I mean, there is a certain prima facie, like there is a basis that for is. which we are dis dis discussing this. I mean, big shouts to Boulare and and Sophie, the France ambassador. It was at a program last November mm. at the uh, uh, Alliance, uh, Alliance, uh, Alliance Francais, Francais, where Sack was performing. Bola went there and Sark was saying that he's not performed in France before and Bola said, would you love to do that? And he said, yes, are you sure? Then he called the ambassador and she said she will do whatever she can to make it happen. And Bola said, it's a game. Pa Fast forward 2022, it's happening. Yeah. I mean, this is very, I mean, great initiative. Our ambassadors in other countries are big. You've seen this. Make you no know, enjoy the white man's country. Mm -hmm. Let's let's find a way to promote our music and our yeah. culture. Yeah. I mean, this woman is doing amazing. People should learn from him, Mr. Moa. Learn from her. <laughs> I like promote that. Maybe may, maybe if every ambassador, mm. uh, every Ghanaian ambassador in every country they've been assigned to mm. start does something small, yeah. maybe a made in Ghana festival yeah, yeah. or concert to that extent, it would in in, in many ways increase the vibe, the, the visibility of. Our, our creative arts industry here in Ghana. Yeah, but um, Kwame, let me come to you quickly. The U.S. Billboard charts, um, Afrobeats charts, which is generating quite a bit of conversation yeah. around it. Uh, we, I look at it and think it, it might be a really great thing for African music in general. Sure. But is it really? Especially now that a lot of artists are being lumped in <laughs> there <laughs> under the umbrella Afrobeats. Imagine if we didn't have that and we only had high life and hip life reggae done so where would we put our people hmm. like black sheriff <laughs> you see so i i, I think that we should rap. <laughs> on, on on which chart us um an african chart or something <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you, know, you, see, you know what came into my mind because the french you see uh, on iTunes, see, mm -hmm. on, on itunes do you uh, know um the, the rap from Africa, yeah. but francophone are under France. Yeah, yeah. But then the West don't consider putting us under. They put us in global music, you which see, still doesn't make any sense. You see, we 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 were finding a way yeah, of we're, catching we're, the eye of the international yes. market, and now we have it. Okay. You see, Happen, so Happen. to me, let's maintain that for now. But what is ours? High life, hip life. Now let's take high life music. I think that the challenge we have with high life one of the reasons we're not able to project high life to that level is the fact that at a point in time those who were older in the high life game the old high life musicians anytime any new high life artist comes up does something different when you high life mm. you are spoiling the genre and all that but music evolves mm. music evolves Maybe you would attest to the fact that the fella Afro beat is not the same thing Ben and Boyan and the other guys are doing right now. No, but yeah. Even with the high life, it's gone through transitions. It's gone through the Boca high life. We have different types of high life, from the big band high life to young Ponsa high life to whatever. So now, now if Kwame Eugene does a certain kind of high life, you get these same old people come to say, when you high life because men tell Homan Siyangu. But high life is not only about Homan Siyangu because it means that they didn't play a Homan it was more of the brass instruments and all that. Mm. So to me, I think that if we are thinking about really rebranding high life music to sell it outside, we should spread our tentacles a bit mm. and then make room for the likes of Kwame Eugene, Kiddy, uh, uh, Kelvin Boy, <coughs> who do a certain kind of high life music. Once 
the the dna of the parent high life ingredients is higher bring it on board mm. but the moment they try to do some fusion spec when you high life meanwhile burger high life had pop mm. Mm. part of its mm. instrumentation listen to George Dacon, yeah lee dodo yeah and all those people, uh, the Michael Jackson, uh, Michael Jackson. Listen yeah. to uh, uh, oh, Chastamua and yeah. G Man. Listen to their instrumentation. I mean, that Boga Highlight exactly. time brought a, a, swift, a, a, yeah. a, a, a switch, a change in, yes. in, in production. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, they will tell you that it was influenced by the yeah. music of the time. Exactly. Yeah. Because so, they had come so, from young kids. And so I, I think that every generation gets its influences from different parts of the world, mm. and that affects the genre being produced mm. we will not have high life as it used to be in the past mm. the high life that Cody Mo did the high life that uh, Nana Kwame Pedu did mm. so if truly we want high life let us bring these guys on board Kwame Eugene does brilliant high life music yeah. but they will say oh let's push it to Afro pop mm. or Afro beat because we, we can't there? hear ta -na -na, ta -na -na. <laughs> and you see the problem is with one the media one, the music executive, the record labels, they do the namings and the rebranding. You can go on air and yes. one day decide to call a certain type of music a certain name. Yes. Afa, mm. Aka. Mm. And that's yeah. all. You see, so I think that it should be a deliberate effort. And also, if Ghana decides that High Life is one of our treasures, we can have, let's say, a High Life Festival once mm. a year or something like that. Recently, there was a meeting uh, where uh, I think the Cultural Forum was suggesting to UNESCO to bring on board high life as intangible heritage mm. okay because reggae has been taken yes. by unesco yeah. and they are now thinking about it what are we doing we mm. are doing high life still but because the high life we do now is not the typical old 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 high life yes you're in front of high life mm. but i have a i have a question mm. i have a question and it's just to you guys why is there a problem sorry I'm noticing it here. Mm -hmm. Why is there a problem in Ghana mm. with the high life section? Because I, I, I don't get it. Th this thing you're saying, like, I didn't even know it was this deep. Yeah. But why? Why should there even be that? A problem? Yeah. Why should there even be that? Because, yes, I know, like, as a kid, I was listening. To, I mean, there, were, there are some Nigerians that also yeah. played mm -hmm. high life in yeah. those yeah. days. Yeah. With flavors, them coming in right now. Um, that song that, um, what's his name? Something Gaga and that old lady, the one old high life artist song on, with on that. Yeka? Yeah, 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 yeah. With, with, with the rappers in them. People still identify all these people, even if it's yeah. new school, as high life. Yeah. So why is there a problem? Why don't people realize that thing? I don't yeah. know, like. <sighs> I think it's been conservative. Yeah. We find it difficult to accept things in different forms. And so we want to get used to a particular old thing. Old way of doing things. Old way of doing things. But that can't sell high life that we have right now. Mm. Because now all the younger guys who are coming up and trying to do something new don't want to do high life because they will say you're not doing real high life. And when and we can't also tell them to stick to a particular and it's why that kills creativity. It's why most of them don't want to term it as high life. So yeah. they, they, so they, they say, say you're doing Afro, yes. Afro beats, Afro pop. <laughs> <laughs> and that's simple for them. Okay, so I think yeah, if we if we are worried about Afro beats being created, then we should think about what to project. Yes. If not, we should forget about it. Okay, well, gentlemen, it's always a pleasure having yeah. you here. Um, Kwame, thank you for your thoughts. Adam, it's always a pleasure having you. Chris, sure, sure. thank you so much for thank being you. here. I I'd like to say happy birthday to my, my aunt's sister, Isino. It's her birthday. So oh. happy, happy birthday to your sister, Isino. May God continue to bless your struggles, your, your hard work, and everything. Amen, thank amen. You. I also want to thank you for giving me Prepare still to drink. Prepare still, yes. Drink yes. your tail. Yes, and we will be going to have a tail. Uh, a very nice conversation with the man, Gofibu Superpa. He's here, and that conversation is coming up right now.